Hi everyone, in this video we're going to discuss the notion of a double integral and the volume of a solid region. So here is the setup. Say we have a continuous function of two variables, f of x comma y, and let's say that it's greater than or equal to zero for all x, y in some region. So all x, y in uh, some region which we'll call R in the XY uh, plane. So here Z is equal to F of XY. So given an X and Y as an input, we have uh, an output which is uh, Z. Let's try to draw a picture. So this is the Z axis here. This is the X axis, okay? And then this is the uh, Y axis. And for simplicity, I'll draw the region R here. There's our region R in the XY plane. And so uh, we have a surface, right? We have a 3D surface. So given, an X, uh, given a point XY in the plane, like these little dots here that I'm drawing, these are points XY in the plane, we get Z values up here somewhere, right? Um, and so I'll try to draw a 3D object. Maybe this is uh, our, our surface here. This is our 3D, our 3D surface, right? Which has domain uh, R, so R is down here. R is in the X, Y plane, right? And this is the graph of Z equals F of X, Y. So what we're going to do is we're going to define uh, a double integral. So what we do uh, is consider like uh, breaking up this region R into like little rectangles. So I'm gonna pick a little rectangle here, okay? And so you can look at your little rectangle and you can define the area a sub i of the ith rectangle as x times y, or in other words, delta x sub i times delta y sub i. If you remember from calculus one, it's just delta x, right? See here it's an area instead of just a delta x. So it's delta x sub i times delta y sub i. And let me, let me blow it up and I'll draw it over here. So what we do uh, is we look at, uh, we pick a point x x i y sub i in, in this little rectangle, and we look at f of x sub i y sub i. We know that's a z value, right? You can call it z sub i if you wanted to. And so what that does is it gives you a 3D image, right? So it gives you like a little 3D image. This is called a prism, right? This is called a prism. This will be the ith prism, just to generalize everything. So the volume of the ith prism, I'll call v sub i, is going to be f of x sub i, y sub i, times a sub i, a sub i. Uh, for, you know, instead of calling it a sub i, we could call it delta a sub i, just to make it a little bit better, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's call it delta a sub i. So this will be v sub i equals f of x sub i, y sub i, delta a sub i, just making it math as we go. <laughs> so this is the height of the prism and this is the area of the rectangle. So the height times the area will give you the volume of the prism, right? The volume of the prism. So if you have infinitely, if you have a bunch of rectangles here, say you have n rectangles, you have n prisms, what you can do is you can form the sum of all of the volumes of, of those prisms, right? So that will give you the sum from i equals one to n of v sub i. Well, v sub i is just the height of the prism, so f of x sub i, y sub i, times um, the area of the prism, so delta a sub i. So this is the sum of the volumes of the prism. So this is approximately equal to the volume, right? It's, it's an estimate of the volume, right? So just imagine we have, oops, I can't even draw a line. <laughs> imagine we have like lots of little, like, little prisms here, right? Lots of little prisms. You have infinitely n prisms, n prisms. So what we do is we take a limit like we always do, right? We let the norm, this is called the norm, this is equal to the length of the longest diagonal of the nth of the n rectangles. So length of longest diagonal of our n rectangles. So if you let the length of the longest diagonal, what's the diagonal? It's this distance here. So that's the, let's call it D. So if you let the length of the longest diagonal go to zero, 
then all of the smaller ones go to zero. So what happens is you get more and more rectangles. So you get more and more prisms. So eventually, you have infinitely many prisms covering your um, your, your 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 surface, right? Your region, and it gives you the volume of your solid, right? It gives you the volume of your solid. So if we let this go to zero, we get the volume. Let's formalize it. So when we take the limit as the norm goes to zero of the finite sum as i runs from 1 to n and here we have the height of our prism times um, the area of the base right of our little rectangle we take this limit we say that this is equal to the double integral over the region r of f of x y and we write we write da we write da right and, and you can write it as dx dy or dy dx uh, we'll work on that later right that's kind of uh, interesting uh, provided the uh, limit exists, so assuming it exists. If the limit exists, we say the function uh, is integrable. So, and as long as f is greater than or equal to zero, uh, we say that this is the volume of the solid uh, below f and above r. So that's how you construct volume using uh, double integrals. I hope this video has made even just a little bit of sense. It's a tough topic, and I tried to just wing it. Uh, but hopefully it made some sense, and in the examples that follow, we'll actually do some computations of double integrals. That's it.